Hello, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May God's divine peace and light, blessings and strength be with you. This is Ihsan, and I often get the question, how much should I meditate? I generally recommend meditating at least once a day for about 15 to 20 minutes, and that really is the minimum. It really is the minimum to really begin to develop this capacity for deeper levels of presence, and also to begin to create this shift in one's consciousness and state of being, uh, moving towards that state that is connected, that is rooted, that is anchored, and that ultimately keeps you present uh, in a way that is conducive to attaining to an experience of connectedness with the presence of our Lord and Creator, our Sustainer, Allah Most High, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, God, the One, the Source. Once a day, 15 to 20 minutes, and I would say that is the minimum at this point. If you are thinking, oh my God, I don't have time, I don't even have 10 or 15 minutes to meditate, then I would suggest you do it twice a day. If you don't have time to sit down for 15 to 20 minutes a day, then I would suggest you need to meditate at least twice a day for 15 to 20 minutes in the morning and in the evening. Because what's happening is that you have, or if, if this is you, or if this is sometimes coming up, that I don't have time to meditate, what's happening is that you are becoming, or we are becoming in this case, overwhelmed and overburdened by time itself. We're becoming slaves to time. We're becoming slaves to dunya. And the more that we feed that psychology, the more that we feed that with our actions and with our rush and with not taking the time to slow down, we will find ourselves with a diminishing amount of the experience of time. Time is relative and the experience of time is relative. And if we are constantly rushing and constantly trying to run from one thing to another to try to get everything done and to cram everything into our day, we are essentially subservient and slaves to dunya, to the world, to the external world of form, really the world of illusion, uh, maya. And the only way to regain control is by slowing down. The only way to regain control over your life is by regaining control over yourself. Your outer circumstances cannot and will not change until you change, until we change. The reason that we are finding ourselves in such a lack of time or the experience of time in the current world is precisely because we are rushing, because we are constantly in haste. And if you haven't seen the video that I did not too long ago on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the, the tradition that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ narrated, in which he said that haste is from shaitan. Uh, I definitely recommend checking that out for a little bit more on that topic specifically. So the more that we rush, the more that we will find ourselves needing to rush. We are creating our experience of reality on a moment by moment basis. And our state, which is a result of our thoughts and our beliefs, and which leads to our actions, is what gets aggregated, is what gets propagated, is what gets amplified over time. So the only way to regain control is to slow down and ultimately to stop, right? Regaining control and mastery over time is part of one's spiritual path and spiritual development because if we are ever going to get closer to God, if we're ever going to experience the divine presence of God, it can only take place in stillness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is transcendent of time. Our Lord, our Creator, God Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala transcends this universe altogether. This universe which was brought into creation, which expanded, which exploded into existence, right? Allah Almighty transcends that. He's beyond space. He's beyond time. He's beyond any type of physical or metaphysical uh, reality. And the only way to make that connection with God is to begin to also transcend this uh, space-time reality. Without getting too uh, geeky, you know, basically it comes down to learning to slow down. And this is the purpose of spiritual development, spiritual practice, especially the prayer of salah. It's about taking time to slow down because otherwise the dunya, it's like it will drive you. It will drive us. It's like being whipped and driven continually by the demands of dunya. And that's why we have to take a few moments, at least four or five times a day to stop, to slow down, to face towards our Lord and Creator, and not just physically, not just towards the physical qibla, but towards the spiritual qibla. Means the heart must face towards Allah by turning away from dunya. The only way this can take place is by slowing down, by stopping. And so this is what meditation provides. It provides the opportunity 
to develop this capacity for presence, for transcendence of the world of form, transcendence of dunya. And the only way to regain control and power over your life is by regaining control and power over yourself, by slowing down, by becoming still. This is the reality of Islam. This is the reality of spiritual development. You know, one of the most ironic things, and I say this quite a bit, about our lives in this day and age, in which we have such a proliferation of technology, is that we find ourselves with less and less time. Whereas, in fact, the very promise of technology was to create more time. But right? if we have machines to do things for us, and if everything is made so convenient, we should have more time available to use for leisure and for self-development and for, you know, whatever. That was the promise of technology, right? If we have microwaves to nuke our food in 30 seconds or a few minutes, rather than, you know, cooking for a couple hours, if all of this stuff comes prepackaged and ready, if we've got cars to exp expedite travel, if we have all of these things that are designed to save us time, right, all of these systems and technologies and programs, essentially to create more time, why are we finding ourselves with less time than ever before? I mean, look at the fast food phenomenon, right? There isn't even time to eat, let alone cook and prepare food. So you've got to basically run through, get something quickly and keep running. This is not the life of a human being. This is not the life of honor and nobility that is proper for the sons and daughters of Adam alayhi salam, the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are, we are created to be deputies of Allah, not servants and slaves to dunya. And this is the trap of technology. The more that we worship and pursue technology as this false god, the more we will find ourselves enslaved to it. And ultimately, it will destroy us. And that's a topic for an entirely different discussion. So, so basically, what I'm saying is we have to. If you are not taking time to meditate on a daily basis, honestly, I don't know what else to say. And uh, we can slip into this pattern of forgetfulness, right? Of having discovered the power of this type of a practice and then maybe slipping and then slowly forgetting and finding ourselves going weeks or months or years and wondering, you know, that was something that was helpful. Why did I stop doing that? Okay, alhamdulillah, we're human. We make mistakes. We, we are forgetful by nature. This is literally the definition of insan. Insan in Arabic means human, human being. And it, this, the root word of that is nasya, which is to be forgetful in nature. So this is why the Prophet of Allah Wasallam said, Dhikr is the most important thing you can do to cultivate the awakening of your heart, the awakening of your soul. In dhikr means remembrance. Remembrance, dhikr is the antidote to forgetfulness, which is our fundamental nature. And how Iblis, Shaitan, Satan, uh, lulls us into this hypnotic state of unconsciousness, ghafla, and ultimately which leads to jahiliya, uh, ignorance, or darkness, which leads to um, evil. Meditation is essential, and don't get too caught up with that word, especially if you are a Muslim, and you're not used to being spoken about, if you're not used to hearing about meditation from imams and mullahs and sheikhs, it simply means to stop, to surrender. And that's the heart and soul and essence of Islam. There can be no Islam without surrender. And to surrender fundamentally at every dimension and level of your being, your body, your mind, your heart, your heart and soul, that is Islam. And that is what that practice of meditation in English, there are many words, you know, you can use muraqaba to define it in Arabic, ultimately, which leads to mushahida. I mean, we don't need to get technical. It's just about stopping, about relaxing, about surrendering, about letting go of tension, about connecting your heart and soul with a transcendent reality that is your source your lifeline without that how are we going to develop or grow or get any closer to god we can go through the motions for an entire lifetime nothing will change and that's why there's a tradition of the prophet muhammad sallallahu in which he says an hour right this is a recorded tradition in which he says an hour of uh, contemplation or reflection is more valuable than 70 years of worship of just going through forms because in that one hour you can actually make greater progress and greater development so that the worship becomes more purposeful you know, so there's this outer dimension and this inner dimension of practice 
And meditation, mindfulness, presence, breathing is what develops the capacity and the ability for inner progress. So how much should you meditate? At least once a day, 15 to 20 minutes. The best times are early in the morning, before Fajr or immediately after Fajr, uh, between Fajr, uh, completing the Fajr prayers and Ishraq, which is the sunrise, uh, before sunrise essentially, and uh, or late at night, deep in the night. There is one other period between Asr and Maghrib, which is about an hour or so before sunset. That's also a very special, blessed time for meditative practice, for spirituality, for dhikrullah. And, you know, we talk about, we understand dhikr as, as Muslims. We understand this concept, this term, or we're at least familiar with it, dhikr. Dhikr means remembrance. It means to, you know, Arabic is so, um, so complex and so vast that any word has almost an ocean of, of meaning within it. So dhikr means uh, to make mention of or to remember. And to remember really is the essence of it, to remember. And the heart and soul of meditative practice is really the essence of dhikr. The, the deepest level of dhikr is, is being completely present with God, with the presence of God. That is the deepest level of dhikr. And so it's, it's, you know, it's good to make dhikr, which is tasbih, a form of dhikr, which is mentioning the names of God, uh, mentioning sacred phrases and prayers and litanies. That's extremely valuable. It's good. But it's meant to lead to a deeper state of dhikr, which is pure presence, pure stillness, pure awareness, consciousness, where the mind becomes still, where there's no more force, there's no more effort, there's no more struggle. There is just surrender. This is the key and this is the path and this is what Islam is meant to lead to. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire our hearts to really realize what this religion is about. Why are we here? It's not about identification with a cultural block. Who cares? What's the point of that? There's no purpose to that. To simply call oneself a Muslim, I'm a Muslim, he's a Jew, she's a Christian, he's an unbeliever, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, if we're not using the path, why identify with it? It's not about a passport to paradise by identification with a cultural block. There's no chosen people concept in Islam. Allah clearly clarifies this point when he says, you are, you are chosen because of what you do. Right? You are the, the best of nations evolved for humanity, for mankind, because you embrace what is blessed, what is good, and you abstain and you refrain and you prevent what is evil. That, that's the condition. Because of our, our actions, we are, or a human being has the potential to be, uh, you know, blessed and, and let's say chosen. And again, going back to the Prophet ﷺ, Muhammad ﷺ, may Allah Almighty raise his rank eternally and keep us and our hearts connected to him. He said, all human beings are equal as the teeth of the comb. All human beings, he said, all human beings, Muslim, Christian, Jew, it doesn't matter. All human beings are equal except in taqwa, in piety, in God consciousness, in awareness, in the development of consciousness itself. That is what differentiates human beings. But physically, and in our physical creation, human beings are, are equal in the sight of God in terms of value. So, there is no one better than anyone else because of what they identify with. The only thing that raises or lowers a human being's rank in the sight of Allah, in the sight of God, and essentially in truth and in reality, is their level of awareness, their level of consciousness. That's what makes the difference. And one can be a Muslim or identify as a Muslim and make virtually no spiritual progress, no development uh, throughout an entire lifetime. Alhamdulillah, Allah's mercy is there. There is a level of belief. There is some level of submission and surrender by accepting the commandments of Allah. And that will be blessed. That will be rewarded. But really, that's the beginning of the path. The five pillars of Islam are not the totality of Islam. It's not the entirety of Islam. It is just simply the foundation upon which Islam is built. Right? The five pillars. These are the pillars, the posts that a structure is based and built upon. This is what gives it form. But it doesn't constitute the entirety of that structure. 
It's just the pillars. Necessary, but not the totality. So may Allah Almighty bless you. Um, didn't want to make this too long, but it turned out to be a little bit longer than I intended. How long should you meditate? At least once a day, 15 to 20 minutes. Simply sit down, breathe, relax, let go, surrender, and really heal, right? And regain control over your heart, over your soul, over your mind, over yourself. And, and that is really the the true jihad, the true jihad enough, the true jihad al-akbar. That is the real struggle of regaining uh, control over the self, bringing the mind into surrender, into submission, and truly drawing nearer unto God and also to awakening your potential. Your potential can never be realized. It will never be realized in the world or out in the world. And the real secret to human potential is spiritual. It's a spiritual reality. It's, it's the awakening of spiritual energy. And that takes spiritual practice at some level. May Allah might bless you. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll see you next time. And uh, this is a holy and blessed time we've just entered or we're entering into the month of Rajab and uh, followed, which will be followed by the month of Shaban and then Ramadan. Uh, may Allah bless this month for you and your loved ones. This is really a, a very blessed time for spiritual practice, for awakening, for spiritual awakening. I mean, these are the months where everything happened. All right, and Rajab was laid out of Isra Miraj, in which the Prophet ascended into the heavens. And Shaban is uh, Laylat al Bara, which is, you know, a, a blessed night, a very holy and special night. And then, of course, in the Ramadan, we have Laylat al Qadr, the night of a thousand months, the night in which the Quran was revealed. So, this is a really blessed time for spiritual awakening. Uh, may we, inshallah ta'ala, take advantage of it and make this year the best and the most powerful. May every year be better than the one before. May every month be the better than the one before. Every week better than the one before. Inshallah. And God willing, every day even be better than the one before. To your divine and eternal success. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.